Happy New Year, everyone, and I hope you all had a happy holidays. Uh, this is Quest Marker. I'm John, and this is part two to uh, a separate video about being a patient gamer in 2020 and a gaming resolution that I made uh, way back. I made the video in March, but I had started it in January. So if you want the kind of full in-depth uh, why this is a part two, uh, part one will be listed below in the description. But to give you the too long didn't watch, I had found that throughout 2019, I was starting to collect games more than I was going to play them. And so I wanted to talk about uh, a resolution which was to try to be patient uh, and deliberate with my game purchases in 2020. And so I made the resolution that I was only going to buy five games. Didn't quite go out as planned, but uh, I have some observations and I came with some conclusions and I also found out that some of the observations that I made in that part one in that video before turned out to be incorrect. And so I wanted to talk about it. Some of you have asked, you know, what games have you bought? Did you stick to your resolution? How did it go? Did you actually only buy five games? I didn't, I bought eight games. So James Miller in the comments needs to give me a good spanking, but some of you have been asking, and I've wanted to talk about this for a while now, and it is now 2021. So yeah, let's jump right into it. Hello, I thought I would deliver the eight games that I've purchased and some of my conclusions and some of my observations uh, in person again. It's been uh, it's been a few videos, so hopefully this would kind of liven it up. I have my my notebook here uh, with the games that I can talk about and some math. Uh, I'm gonna give you kind of just a brief rundown of all of the eight. Not gonna go into a whole lot of detail, uh, but I wanted to touch on each of them and and why I purchased them and and then kind of get into some of the bigger picture stuff as we go in. So. Hunt Showdown, Crytek's new multiplayer shooter, the Louisiana Bayou, the kind of the PvPVE setting, working with your teammates, the creepy setting. It's a game that I spent a lot of time with this year, and it's been immensely rewarding. Um, I think for all of us, 2020 was probably the, the year of gaming more with friends than usual because of everything that went on. I actually want to kind of do a more in-depth review of Hunt Showdown in a later video because I have a lot to talk about, and it's in a really exciting place right now. It's one of those games that has really certainly gotten better over time since its 1.0 launch. It's a game I've been following for a long time. It's a game that's always really interested me. So yeah, pulled the trigger on it and it's been worth the $40 or whatever uh, when I got it on sale. The second game is Deep Rock Galactic, uh, which was in early access as well and got a 2020 release. You play as Dwarven Miners, you shoot up insectoids while you mine stuff. What really needs to be more said about this game than not? It's also a game that I've been following for quite a while. I don't usually buy games out of early access, uh, but so when they finally do launch, that's kind of when I pull the trigger. It's been a great game that I've played this year with friends. It's been rewarding. It. These were the two games, both Hunt Showdown and Deep Rock, that I want to kind of talk about more in a subsequent video, but for now, uh, they were the first two on my list and when I was going in with the only five games and I've enjoyed every moment with Deep Rock. I will say that it does get into a bit of a grind at some point, but just for like the pure, let's just drop in, let's mine, let's shoot some giant aliens, let's zip line around these awesome procedurally generated caves and let's drink beer and then dance the night away. For that, it's great. Uh, and I'll save some of my comments maybe for a later review. Then we have Medal of Honor 2010. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of now shifting into the games that I purchased for the purposes of making videos uh, and not necessarily for my pure own enjoyment, although I hoped, fingers crossed, that I would enjoy them. Medal of Honor 2010 is a game I absolutely did not enjoy. It's probably one of the worst games I've played in a long time for a whole bunch of reasons uh, that I'll get into when I actually use it in a video. But uh, it was only $6. It was one of two games that I needed to get to work on a broader uh, contextual piece that's coming in the pipes. And so it was a game that I, I needed to buy and play. I wish I could return it, but I have six hours clocked. Uh, and so the Steam refund policy no longer works. But Medal of Honor was game number three. 
And so now this is where I broke my uh, rule of five here, as I started to accumulate more games than was probably necessary, because I went off and purchased Pillars of Eternity Deadfire, as well as Mass Effect Andromeda. And these games are also for what I would say a larger thought piece that I'm hoping to come out in 2021, about colonialism and RPGs. So yeah, I didn't need to buy them. It was at this point that I was starting to waver on my rule and my resolution, and probably was starting to care less. I don't know, this was a moment of weakness. Which leads right back into Life is Strange 2. I thought, I really did think I was gonna get around to playing this in 2020. It just didn't click, it didn't work out, I guess I kind of forgot about it. I'm a huge fan of Life is Strange 1. Anyways, Life is Strange 2 is something I'm hoping to play in the coming months, and yeah, uh, I guess now we're at six games, and so I broke my resolution at this point, uh, so let's just take it over the finish line with some more multiplayer games. So Sea of Thieves came out in 2017. I was really caught up in the hype when this released, but for whatever reason I didn't have the capacity to play it at that time, and I think I got caught up in some of the negative reviews about like, what do you do in this game? But because of COVID and because of the pandemic, I just like really just wanted to sail around with my friends and I love the limitation in games where you can't, one person cannot do everything themselves and requires teamwork and coordination. So like the whole thing about somebody needs to sh sail the ship and they can't see because of the mast so you need people to coordinate and somebody needs to drop anchor at the right time. Like just even that, all of that by itself is enough to hook me. I hate how the game is all about cosmetics but man does it feel good to sail around. Um, Wind Waker was a game when I was a kid that made a huge impression on me even though I'm not really a big Zelda person but the idea of sailing around in a boat got it like that's all I want and so that's what Sea of Thieves filled. It's fun doesn't try to do a lot and I kind of just enjoy it for what it is. Unlike the last game on this list, which is Destiny 2. One of my friends is a big Destiny fan. I actually had bought Destiny way back uh, at release, uh, Destiny 2 that is, because uh, I wanted to see what all the hype was about. And it does feel good to shoot one of the many bad guys in the game, the, the whatever they're called, the Forsaken, the, the Vex, the big rhino dudes. I don't know. Um, but. Uh, so we got into Destiny 2, it's kind of an alternative to some of the other games that I was playing this year, and it felt really good at the beginning. But then as I started to get more and more into it, uh, that's where it started to all fall apart. Uh, when I had to start doing strikes over and over again, when the story missions were as interesting as a wet noodle, and that's when I started to really lose it. And Beyond Light at this point was kind of looming on the horizon. So I felt this kind of great rush that I had to get through all of this content and I had to max out my battle pass thing. And it was at this point that I was logging into Destiny 2 not to just like enjoy the game, but I felt like I had to do a bunch of checklist items, which really undercut the fun. And then I realized that if I'm not doing the checklists of like collecting all of these quests, like why is there a cap? on how many quests you can hold at one time. It seems so stupid to me, but once I started realizing that like that was what I enjoyed doing, but that itself like was not enjoyable, if that makes any sense, that I'm like, I don't know, I'm out, I'm out. Which is often happens with me a lot of times with looter shooters or loot based games. I don't get it, I play through it for the narrative. Destiny's 2's narrative is like, what the f is going on? So I kind of left it by the wayside. I never got beyond light and I really have no interest to return into that game. And I kind of regret. And so those are the eight games I bought in 2020. I failed my 2020 gaming resolution of only purchasing five games. Why did I fail? Well, because I bought games thinking I would play them quote unquote sometime in the future, down the road, later on that I was padding my already padded vault of games with just more padding. It was a mistake, but I think I found a way to correct it. My 2021 gaming resolution. All of this is an iterative process and I'm learning about myself and my habits and about gaming habits along the way. Cause back in 2020, I bought over 60 games and spent over $80 a month on video games. And so I felt that I was spending way too much time collecting games and I was just spending way too much money on games I wasn't playing. 
So in 2020, I bought eight games. I spent less than 250 Canadian on the year. And so you might think that this is a marked improvement if from that perspective and from that mindset, but it's not. I think part of the fallacy was that the amount of money was somehow indicative, but really it's the time that you spent enjoying what you're buying. You can spend however much you want on video games or on hobbies, and for some $200 a year on a hobby is fine. For others, $1,000 over the year is fine. But this notion of only purchasing X amount of games or spending Y amounts of money doesn't really go after my original sentiment. Spending time playing games that you've spent your hard-earned money on buying. What is a better metric of success in the landscape of constant hype and constant releases and constant pressure to consume the next product is actually the number of games played versus games bought, or just your games played ratio. One of the mottos of my friend that I've kind of unearthed over the past 18 months is the question of Am I going to play this game right now? And the digital ecosystem of where games can be bought one minute and then pretty much played the next, there is an immediacy to our access that you couldn't get 10 or 15 years ago. There's always going to be another sale or another opportunity to buy. So what I've been trying to ask myself is, am I going to play this right now? Or am I going to play this later today or, or tomorrow? Have I set aside time knowing that I'm going to play this game that I'm spending money on? To just really think about these questions before I click checkout on any of the digital storefronts. This line of thinking, I think, goes after that games played ratio. And when I reflect on 2019 and 2020, it's what still stands out as an alarming behavior as me as a gaming enthusiast, as a, as a gamer, as somebody who likes games so much that I, I talk about it on the internet. Because in 2019, I bought roughly 65 games, but I only played 17 of them. In 2020, I got a lot better. I bought eight games and as we know though, I only played five. So my games played ratio went from around the abysmal 25% in 2019 to almost 66% in 2020. And in 2021, my resolution is to make that number 100%. Yeah, I'm not setting any kind of cap or limit or dollar sign. I just have to play the games that I buy. How do I quantify playing? I don't know. Personally, I set the bar really low, like maybe an hour of game time. You can tell a lot in the first hour of a game. You've at least tried it. You've waited a little in the pool of the gameplay experience. You've got the opening act largely under your belt, and the game has either hooked you or not. You can also still refund the game at Steam at this point. So yeah, I challenge all of you to really ask yourself on game purchases in 2021. Am I going to play this right now? And if you are, great, you're going to get that ratio to 100% by the end of the year. Your purchases will be worthy, you're going to enjoy what you buy, you're not going to play it later because it's on sale or feel the need that this is the cheapest moment uh, in time for a particular release. Those are all marketing tactics to make you feel bad that you're not spending your money right now on a game. I'm here to encourage you that playing what you buy is just going to make video games a more enjoyable hobby overall. You'll be more thoughtful with your purchases, excitement for a game will feel more exciting, and we'll be able to sit back in 2022 content with this hobby we love. So good luck, my nerds, and may the best gamer game. Hey everyone, before I dip out of this video, I do want to say that there's a part 3 that will be coming. This part 2 has largely been centered on my experiences of buying games and what games I bought and some of the rationale and, and how I ultimately failed, but also how this is going to transition obviously now into my 2021 resolution. But I do have some thoughts that are a little more divergent that are focusing on what it was like to be somebody in 2020 who was on the proverbial sidelines of new releases and new games and the gaming discourse more broadly. So I have another video in the works that is meant to go after some of my feelings and observations as someone who was basically a quote unquote patient gamer for most of the 2020 games. and what this means and approaches that we should take to gaming in the future. Also, how I've viewed the gaming industry as somebody who didn't take part in all of these sensationalized, big tentpole kind of conversations. So stay tuned for that and stay safe, everyone. Until next time.